Did you ever think you would personally be responsible for creating over 9,000 companies, 300,000 jobs, and over 5.3 billion in economic impact? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you all? Don't you all see that? Uh, yeah, uh, those are things that, have, th those numbers come from a, a study we did with uh, Wharton uh, School of Business about the economic impact of Kickstarter projects, and um, there's been a lot of things that have happened from it. If you're not familiar with Kickstarter, it's a platform people post ideas and the public can put up money to help make them a reality. What's unique about it is that there is no exchange of financial self-interest. So these are not investments. Um, they are a pre-purchase of goods or services or a donation or a modern idea of patronage, but it's not based on upsides. You're not looking for what's a good investment, just what's something that seems like it should exist in the world. And because of that, three and a half billion dollars have has moved to creative ideas from non-famous people. Um, and you know, there are three of us who started this. Um, we started working on it a long time ago. It was 12 years ago for me. Uh, never, never, ever, ever would have guessed these things would be true, but um, certainly always believed in the idea and felt a pull from it that um, even though our, the process of making Kickstarter a public website people could go to were way harder than we imagined, and we spent four years making every mistake doing that, uh, there was always a strong feeling of like, this, this is an important idea. And, uh, you know, the world, the world needs a space that's not about economic self-interest, that's about creativity. Um, and we just always felt like we had a strong conviction about how to do that. Uh, that continues to be the case. How did you originally meet Perry Chen and Charles Adelaide? So I, my mother and my brother are here visiting. Uh, they're in the front row. I'm, I'm they just happened to be in New York this week for a visit they got here today, so. Uh, we're, we're delighted to have you. Yeah, yeah, shout out to mom. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I moved to New York in 2000, and to be a music journal, to be a writer, it's my dream, and I made a living as a music journalist for about eight years, writing for the Village Voice and places like that, reviewing records. Wasn't very successful at it, but I have a weird name, so people think that they've seen you, even if they only, like, only see your name once. <laughs> um, thank you, Mom. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, in 2005, I was, going, I was at a restaurant in Brooklyn, Williamsburg, called Diner, where I was a regular, and there was a uh, guy there who was a waiter, we kind of knew each other a little bit, and we started having a more proper conversation, and he had had the idea for Kickstarter. He was an artist who was waiting tables, and. Um, and uh, he'd done a lot of things in life before, and, but he told me he'd had this idea. And so we like, had a beer together one night, and he told me about it, and we decided you know, pretty soon thereafter to start working on it together. He invited me to be the second guy. But, and this was Perry or Charles? This is this Perry is in 2005. Perry first had the idea of living in New Orleans, wanted to throw a concert, had, and basically was gonna have to front 20 grand to make it happen. Book the venue, book the artist, pay for first class tickets. Uh, no way was that going to happen, but he thought, what if I could propose the idea of the concert online? People put up their credit cards, but the only way anyone's charged is if the show sells out. That way I don't have to front the 20 grand. Everyone kind of together gets to decide whether or not this is even a good, a good idea to begin with. Yeah, that just made sense to him. So that was the idea. That was the idea we were working from. Is how do you how do you build that system? And where does Charles enter the equation? So Charles was uh, so so okay. So I get involved. So then uh, uh, an artist slash waiter and a struggling rock critic are starting a technology company. So Voltron, Voltron is already complete. Uh, but yeah, but we, we were really trying hard to, to build it and struggling. And then um, we asked around and we found a designer uh, who's more experienced than either of us to come join. This is Charles, um, the third founder. And then things got a lot more pro after that. And then. So about two years after that, the Kickstarter actually launched. But there was four years of uh, Perry and I pitching many uh, VCs, potential VCs. I don't think anyone in this room. Uh, <laughs> and nobody liked it. Nobody liked the idea. I remember one VC telling us, like, isn't there already too much art in the world? Which, <laughs> honestly, may be true. That might be true. There's some truth to that. Uh, 
but like that was more the reaction that we would get from people, and so no one liked it. Um, the only like investment money, real real investment we've taken is from a firm here in New York called Union Square Ventures, yeah. kind of Fred, Fred Wilson, right? and. And we met Fred and his partner Brad in that same time when we were just like two bozos with a pitch deck and nothing to show for it. And, uh, and we met with USV and, and their reaction was like, hey, we think this is interesting, why is it you all? And like we had no idea what to do with that question because we were just used to people shutting us down. Uh, so I think we blew that. Like they opened a door for us and then we, you know, we fumbled the keys. Uh, but we weren't able to end up working with them. But it, it was just striking that everyone told us this is a bad idea. And then USV, who saw Twitter, who saw Foursquare, saw Tumblr, you know, early and all these things, they were the only ones, they were the only ones who liked it. 